people in my life that bring me joy and why. Guess what, guys? You're gonna be on the list. Cheesy, I know, but it's the truth. <laughs> Using the plot today. Do I look tired? I feel like I look tired. I feel like I'm so tired that I look tired, but other people probably don't realize that I'm tired, but they might realize I'm tired. I realize I'm tired. Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Firstly, it's Holy Week, which is Easter week in the Christian calendar. The time when we have Good Friday and Easter Sunday, when we remember the atoning death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. As a result of it being Holy Week, I am part of a team from my church going into local primary schools, doing like an Easter play to spread the message. This is amazing for so many reasons, but on a like practical level, it's getting me up and out of the house early in the morning, which I always try and seize opportunities like this because I don't know if anyone else can relate to this, but mentally, if I'm out of the house in the morning, I'm so much more productive the rest of the day as opposed to kind of not leaving the house until the afternoon or whatever. It's currently Monday. I've just been to the first school and it's probably about quarter past 11 now. I'm not sure what time it is. It's 24 minutes past 11. Do you like my Pride and Prejudice background? I'm sitting down right away and getting started. The reason being, I have a lot of work to do. Hence the speech, the monologue I gave about being tired at the start of the vlog. I don't really know why I'm feeling so much pressure, particularly now. My deadline is May the 7th. And it's currently the end of March. So it actually does make sense that I'm feeling the pressure right now because I tend to feel the pressure at this point as opposed to like the week before because I've spoken about this before on my YouTube channel but the way that I find the most effective for me personally studying is not leaving my work to the last minute. I like to get ahead and get cracking on it soon so then if like I need a break or if I'm ill or if life happens it's okay for me to give myself like a couple of days off because I've started early. So that's the plan. Let me just give you a to-do list. What I have to do for my master's degree. And some of this is compulsory, some of this is additional, and some of this is because I emailed my lecturer and said, what can I do to get myself the best grade? So she's given me a list of things that I've now taken on myself to make compulsory because I want to do the best I can. I always pray, I say, Lord, help me to do the best I can for your glory. I believe it's good to do that from a Christian perspective, not burning yourself out, but trying your absolute hardest. So I have to read a book called The Poison Wood Bible by Barbara Kingsolver, a book called Mayflies by Andrew O'Hagan, another book by Andrew O'Hagan, which hasn't arrived and I can't remember the name of because it's not on my shelf. I also am reading Confessions by St. Augustine, Grace Abounding to the Chief of Sinners by John Bunyan, and another one which is over there on my shelf, but I can't remember the name of. These are all autobiographies apart from the Poisonwood Bible, which is like fiction. It's a novel, but it reads like an autobiography. It's very bizarre. A couple of these are set texts on the reading list, but optional. And a couple of these, my lecturer said, if you want the best grade, read these. So I'm gonna do my absolute best to get through them. In addition to, in addition, in, wow, wow. In addition to that, I have a 5,000 word portfolio of autobiographical writing to do for May the 7th, but I don't want to start that until I've read these books because the point of reading these books is to inspire me and help my language skills so it makes sense to read them before I start my writing. In addition to that, I've got a 2,000 word reflective essay, which I'm not worrying about because study tip, I did this during my undergrad and during my postgrad now, what I'm, my masters, what I'm doing is as I'm going along, making a note of the text that I read that inspire my writing so that when it comes to writing a reflective essay, I know exactly what has inspired my work, what I can reflect on etc. So I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I feel a little bit wound up this week once I've channeled that kind of like adrenaline into studying and then it will hit like 5 p.m. and I'll be like I'm ready to start for the day. Obviously my chief motivation is and should be the Lord working for his glory using the gifts he's given me but you guys are gonna help me. So the first thing I'm gonna get started on is 
I'm finding it quite intimidating because this is the book that I just mentioned to you, The Poisonwood Bible by Barbara Kingsolver. I don't know what I think of this book yet. I genuinely don't know if this is a critique or it's pro-Christianity, but it's about a missionary family that moves to the, the Congo. And it's already inspired me to be fair because it's written from the perspective of different members of the family. So I've already got a lot out of this book. I'm on page 74, but the reason this book is intimidating me, can you tell? This is page 74. Sorry, I did dog ear it because I didn't have a bookmark, but it's secondhand anyway. This is page 74. Can you, can you see where I'm getting at? This book is 700, no it's not. Okay, I exaggerated. It's 614 pages, 614 pages. That's intimidating, that's so intimidating. So what I'm going to do, which is a little study tip, it makes it makes me laugh that you guys get study tips from me, but like, cool. I'm gonna set myself a one hour timer on my phone because that's just mentally gonna help me because it's got a deadline for when I stop reading. So I'm just gonna sit here now. I've just made a cup of tea, surprise, surprise. Perfect temperature. And I'm just going to read and make progress on this book, which I'm currently not sure what I think of, so. Reading tip as well, that I found so helpful if you're studying English, or to be honest, for any course, if you've got like set reading. I'm currently sitting at my desk. Because I enjoy reading as a hobby, I find it difficult to differentiate, just like in my brain, just mentally. If I am reading a compulsory text or something for uni, like lying on my bed or on the sofa where I typically read, for, for my hobby. I struggle then if I if it's hit the evening and I'll go to read the book I'm reading, you know, in my leisure time. So at the moment I'm reading the third Narnia book, especially during times like this when I've got a book I'm reading for pleasure and like a set book, I try and read in different places. So I'm currently sat at my desk to tell my brain this is not leisure reading, this is, you're studying right now. So even though you're reading and it's something you do as a hobby, you're not doing your hobby right now, you're, you're studying. And that really helps me to differentiate. And then when it comes to it, relax when I go and read for pleasure to relax, which is bizarre. But I must admit, I don't read as much during term time for pleasure as I do like during the summer because sometimes your brain just needs a break. <laughs> myself wondering what did happen to the last 10 I ran away with my life fast forward never turn back again it's kind of funny that the more we pass time the more we need to set the rewind and 19 was the year I had to leave you but now I'm seeing all the signs is this really happening I can't believe it's true I'm just as surprised as you Whenever I'm feeling sleepy, water helps. Hi guys, it's like half past two, is it? No, it's not, it's quarter to three. Just had a lunch break because I believe it is a very important part of our day. If we're in a full-time job, we have a lunch break most of the time. And as a full-time student, it's also something that's good to incorporate into our day. That also is not a groundbreaking revelation, but there you go. There's my two cents for the day. I've had a hair change and an outfit change because I was cold and I don't know if you guys get this, but when I have my hair in a high pony, it just starts making me feel like my head's gonna fall off. So that's changed. What we're gonna do this afternoon is if you are a real one and you watched my last vlog, master student vlog, you will have watched me decorate this. You will have also watched me be assigned this task. We've each been given on my master's course 
this little yellow journal we've been given up until the end of the Easter break which is in three weeks time to fill it with creative writing and etc. So since we last spoke I've filled a lot of it and I'm also not going to show you it because it's very private. <laughs> it is a journal after all. So this is what I've filled it with. I compiled this list of journaling prompts from some that my lecturer said, some that I found online and also some Christian ones I found online because I thought that would be cute and I'm not sure if you can see that exactly but I've got a fair few ticks by them meaning that I have completed a lot of them and filled up a lot of this journal but I've still got a lot to go so it's ambitious but today I'm going to try and complete the rest of the journal prompts and fill the rest of this book because it's one of those things now that's been going on a bit of a while that I kind of want it to be done so I can move on to my other reading and sleeping. <laughs> I feel like every student is at this point in the year where it's like ah. God is our strength and if we didn't if we weren't Honestly, if we weren't aware of our weakness, we wouldn't know how amazing it is to rely on God's strength. And we can and we will, and that's what I'm gonna do right now. So I'm gonna put on a cute playlist and just get cracking. And I found this to be a really good thing to do. If you are a if you are a writer, it's been so good. And I actually got inspired. One of the prompts was to start with the line tracing the outline of her face from a photograph just from that one prompt I did a whole page and I've actually decided to make it into a longer piece so stuff like this is so good I said this last time for just sparking that creativity and kind of planting seeds that can lead to bigger ideas and stuff so I'm really grateful I've had this assignment this is how I've been choosing which um like journal prompt I use so it's this thing I found online, which is like a number picker. And because I've got 37 journal prompts, I entered that I've got 37. And then you just write the numbers that you've already had. And then you press the, I don't know if the volume's on, let's just put it on for fun. So then you press the middle. How exciting. What is it? Hope I don't get copyrighted for that. 35. So journal prompt number 35 is people in my life that bring me joy and why. Guess what, guys? You're going to be on the list. Cheesy, I know, but it's the truth. <laughs> I'm losing the plot today. I also got these cool pens, acrylic paint pens. Not sure who bought me them, but I feel like someone bought me them as a birthday present. And they're just really good quality. So I'm gonna tick 35 off. What playlist should we put on? Morning focus at five to three. Life lessons come one in a dozen. The other 11 get something from nothing. I sit here looking for an answer Maybe the biggest question was in the last chapter You gave me the soul I have today Without you I never could have moved away But now I see what you teach I do believe I always should have stayed Yeah Is this really happening? I can't believe it's true I'm just this surprised it's you Something from nothing. 
Life lessons come one in a dozen The other eleven get something from nothing Life changes just open the door But one thing's certain, I'll always be switch the camera off I'll just share this so journal prompt number 34 because I accidentally wrote the date on 34 so now I've got to do 34 and 35 is how can you use your spiritual gifts to help I don't know what the question was it was about spiritual gifts and I've basically copied out this verse from 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 10 this was preached on last night at church and I really believe it corrected something that I have held very closely to for many years from previous teaching, churches I was in, etc. But basically, it's this concept of what to use spiritual gifts for. And one of the previous churches I was in, watch the video linked below, very much focused on like purpose and fulfillment. And I've probably spoken about it on this channel, if not definitely. But in the sermon last night, our pastor spoke about this verse. And in this verse, it says, use the gifts you've received to serve others. Our spiritual gifts are not primarily for purpose or self-fulfillment, they're to serve others. And it's just such a sim simple concept that only really hit home last night. So I was very grateful for that. So I'm just going to share that with you because it's biblical. And I do think a lot of stuff circling nowadays focuses, especially like post enlightenment and stuff that isn't Christian, focuses on like self-fulfillment and purpose and stuff. But our gifts as Christians are to be used to serve others. And just to kind of contradict myself as well, I often find that when I am serving others, I'm happiest. I'm going to turn the camera off. Don't know when I'll next see you, and I'm gonna hopefully finish and fill this book. Someone's happy because we just went on a walk to wake ourselves up, didn't we? And now we're feeling nice and fresh and awake, and we're gonna get back to studying. Well, I am, you are not. You already did your GCSEs, didn't you, Milo?